coach, uh, Arkansas, a team that can get up and down the court, and you guys kind of like to obviously slow down the, the tempo a little bit sometimes with defense. I guess, do you kind of see this as a game of contrasting styles? Oh, not necessarily. I think uh, one of the great benefits in playing in the Big 12 is we're prepared to play in different styles. Um, and we were trying to speed up the first game. Um, Arkansas definitely has an aggressive attack, one of the highest scoring teams in Kyle's basketball. Um, but we're prepared to play at whatever pace uh, we need to to be successful in the game. I think regardless of the pace, uh, you know, the ability to take away their great shots in transition is going to be important. They're going to take shots in transition. It's the way they play and uh, the way they attack. But we got to make sure these aren't, you know, wide open uh, A zone shots in the break. Um, likewise with us, uh, just playing in the Big 12, we've had the experience of playing at different tempos offensively. So, you know, we're going to have to manufacture enough offense to be successful in this game. Certainly, you guys have been successful in the transfer market. They have a guy in Justin Smith from Indiana who transferred over there. How have you seen him in, in your preparation become a go-to score for them and how he was successful yesterday in, or, or in, in the previous game against Colgate? Pardon me. Well, yesterday he had a, a, an amazing game, you know, arguably the best performance in the first round of this year's NCAA tournament. He's a guy that can affect the game in so many ways on both ends of the floor. I think specifically with transfers, the most important thing is fit. Um, and I think uh, Coach Muss and those guys have done a great job, you know, putting him in positions to be successful. And I think he's done a great job, obviously, executing those things as the player. So um, it appears to me he's exactly what their team needed. Um, and I don't know about his first situation in Indiana, uh, but it looks like that it's a good situation for him too. Last one from me. I know you talk about this all the time, especially with March basketball, but how important will it be to not turn the ball over, especially in a game yesterday where you guys forced 22, had 28 points off those turnovers, and Arkansas was able to get 34 points off turnovers in their contest? Yeah, both teams, Texas Tech and Arkansas, um, have defenses that are based on and built, uh, you know, to create offense. And the uh, best way to do that is to make the opponent turn it over, block a shot, uh, maybe get them to take a sped up, you know, bad shot. And so I think we're similar to Arkansas in that way. It's two aggressive defenses. Um, we play a little bit different, but I think the objective is the same on both sides. Um, you know, I think the thing that kills you is, you know, the live ball turnovers. You know, if we're gonna, if we're gonna hand it to Arkansas every once in a while, we might as well just throw it out of bounds and let them throw it in. Um, then we got a fighting chance. If, we're going to come down and just hand it to them. Uh, you know, that's not going to work in our favor. And I think the same thing for them. You know, I don't want to speak for them, but I'm sure it's not their idea to turn the ball over against us either. But two aggressive defenses um, and then two teams, I think, that can uh, score offensively as well. Let's go to Chuck with Dallas Morning News. Yeah, Chris, I, I was curious, especially when you have a lot of upsets in the tournament or some big upsets, especially in your bracket. Do you at all reference that with your players in terms of, hey, here's what can happen here. Here are all the things that, you know, why why you need to take care of business? No, I understand uh, the question. I couldn't even tell you what bracket we're in and I couldn't tell you what's going on, anything outside of what I described to the players each year is a four team tournament. So last Sunday after selection show Sunday, we enjoyed watching our name get called. We paid attention to who was in our four team tournament. And then we immediately, you know, went to work with our players. And I just described, hey, it's a, it's a four team tournament. Most important game is the first one. Uh, then you're basically playing a championship game to try to reach the sweet 16. So. Our first opponent, Utah State, was a really, really good team. Um, I do know enough, enough about Colgate that Arkansas's first round opponent was also a very good team. So to me, I've always set it up as four game, uh, you know, four, four team, two game tournaments. Uh, I really couldn't even tell you who's in our bracket. And, and um, different topic, but, you know, in your NCAA history at Tech at least, You've never been outscored in the second half. What goes into the uh, the adjustments that you and your staff make 
with your players at halftime? What, what are some of the things that you're looking at and how willing are you to change things a little bit on the fly? Yeah, definitely willing to do whatever it takes to win a possession. Um, you know, I've had some great mentors and coaching, obviously Coach Knight at the top of that list and Pat and um, proudly associated with those guys. But I also uh, work with some really good people, you know, whether it be uh, Coach Casper or Shannon Hayes or Vic Trilly. Um, I spent some time with some great coaches. And one of the things I learned as a young assistant at Abilene Christian who, by the way, is having a great season with Joel Golding. Wish those guys best of luck today against a Big 12 opponent. Uh, but one of the things I learned from Shannon Hayes was just, um, you know, winning uh, over anything. And so, you know, it's like you talk to coaches about philosophy. Well, I really want a, a four-man that can shoot. Well, okay, what if you have a chance to get the best athlete in the country at that four spot, but shooting's not his deal? I think coaches that can adjust – from year to year with your personnel. That's what college basketball is. In my eyes, it's always been that because of the jobs I've had, junior college, division two, et cetera. But now I think with the new NCAA rules and the transfer market and the portal and all, I think basketball is roster management, in my opinion. Um, so back to halftime adjustments, I mean, we'll do anything to win a possession. I, I remember Shannon Hayes would always, and we'd change our offense at halftime if he thought that's what we needed to do to win a game. So it was one of many things I picked up from uh, several of my mentors. So at halftime, you know, it's really a big picture thing. You know, it's not like, it's not a scientific lab in there. You know, it, uh, it's not like we sit around and think that we're the smartest guy in the room. We just, you know, hey, hey, what's working? Let's keep doing it. What's not working? Let's clean it up. Uh, and let's make sure we get back to the original game plan too. More times than not, uh, the adjustment is just doing what you're supposed to be doing in the first place. Thanks. All right, let's go to Bob Holt in Arkansas. Hey, hey, Chris, how you doing? Good, thank you. Um, hey, you guys have been in the Sweet 16 the last two times, you know, this tournament was able to be played. Arkansas had made it since 96, um, which is kind of a shock, I think, to people that follow basketball. What do you think about that drought for Arkansas? And, um, and, and you know, what, what's been the key to you guys getting the Sweet 16 the last two times? How long has Coach Musk been there now? It's his second season. He and he's been there with Nevada, you know. Yeah. So we played his Nevada team. They were special and made a great run. And I know the country fell in love with his daughter. That was pretty cool. March Madness. Um, I've got three daughters that are pretty cool as well. Um, you know, my thing with history, nobody respects the game more than me. And uh, but the big thing is, you know, if if I was Musk and somebody asked me that question, I would say, well, respectfully, I've only been here two years. Uh, similar when we got to Texas Tech, everybody talked about we hadn't been in a tournament X years, um, never been past the Sweet 16. And I as well, I, you know, I, I respect that. But I mean, this is our second year. So, you know, we made the Elite Eight in the second year. So um, on the other hand, you know, I look, Arkansas is a special place to me. I, I grinded and worked as hard as I could for two decades in this business. Um, and one man, Chase Conk, um, and, and one president at Little Rock you know, gave me an opportunity. So I will be forever grateful and appreciative of Chase, the Ar uh, University of Arkansas, Little Rock, um, the Trojans. While living in the state of Arkansas, um, you know, you follow Arkansas basketball too. And, um, you know, living in the capital city and all, it's just, uh, just became kind of a fan uh, of not only the, the universities, but also, you know, just basketball in general. The, um, the, the GOAT, Coach Crawford, uh, rest in peace, the, the AAU basketball, the high school coaching, Wes Flanagan's dad at Parkview. I, I used to just go over there and watch practice as a fan all the time. So Arkansas is a basketball state, a lot of tradition. Um, that is an interesting fact that they haven't been to this round in so many years. But in my mind, it's it's a basketball school, uh, starting with you know Coach Sutton uh, in my lifetime, then Coach Richardson. I thought Mike did a great job there. Um, and now Muss is, is, is just killing it year two. So, um, you know, nobody um, follows and, you know, appreciates basketball in Arkansas more than me. Well, what do you think is the key to getting the Sweet 16? Is it about matchups? Is it about being hot? Is it about luck? Maybe a little bit. Just what, what, what all goes into that? Well, I think the first thing is you got to get in the tournament every year. You know, like when we got to Tech, uh, I mean, Little Rock was the same thing, those of you that remember. But we said, look, if we're going to win the fight, you got to get in the fight. 
So, you know, if you're not one of the 68, you're not going to make the Sweet 16. <laughs> but on the other hand, I think if you get in the 68 on a consistent basis, um, then, you know, you got a chance to get the 16, the 8, the 4, and then the Monday night. So, um, you know, you, you got to get in, in the tournament uh, to make a run in the tournament. And that's really hard to do. You know, like I've been on both ends of it. The mid-major deal, Little Rock, uh, Sun Belt, it's just – to me, it's the biggest pressure of anything in basketball. Like I, I never coached or played in a Super Bowl or World Series, but when you have a great season like we did at Little Rock and you know you got to go win that tournament to get in, that's a pressure that I've never felt before. Um, it's really hard to get in the tournament. And you get in the SEC or the Big 12, it's, it's not easy. I mean, it, it's very, very difficult to win a Big 12 game. Um, and it's very difficult to win enough to get the resume. So I think just – that's why the selection show Sunday is, is the big day. I mean, just to get in the fight, now you got a chance. But it, but it's very difficult to get in the fight. This year, you know, the blue bloods of our sport, the the, the goats of the sport, you know, you the Kentuckys and Dukes aren't in the tournament. And uh, it's just really, really hard to get in the tournament. But I think the key to making a run, the key to making a Sweet 16 is is getting there every year, you know, giving yourself a chance. I just got one more. You, you, you were talking about uh, roster management. A minute ago, you know, Eric's got nine newcomers this year, so some of whom were hurt. But it's what do you think about the job he did with so many newcomers? And they kind of start off rough in the SEC, and and uh, Smith was hurt, and then they really got on a run. What what do you thought he he's done with this this new roster? Well, I think to me, it's the outside looking in. I haven't talked to coach about this, but you know, you asked the question to me, and I'll answer it. Like, I, I think it's what he does. It goes back to his experience in. Uh, you know, the minor league pro basketball, the NBA. I mean, it's like, it is roster management. It, it's trades. It's uh, this guy retires, this guy comes in. It's, you know, uh, in my in my perspective, coaching one of these guys that grew up in basketball thinking, well, I'm going to, you know, my freshmen are going to turn to sophomores. My sophomores are going to turn to juniors. You know, in the NBA, you don't say, hey, this owner is going to let me have six years to build this. I mean, it's there's an urgency to win immediately. Um, in my path, that's what I've always felt. You know, in junior college, you don't build anything. You try to win and help your guys get scholarships and change lives. And Division Two, your roster is constantly changing. In my professional basketball experience with in South Carolina, we were kind of like a farm league. Uh, we were getting players when they would go back to Europe or back to an NBA opportunity. We didn't have anybody go straight to the NBA, but a couple of guys went to G League. You know, the roster changes. So, um, you know, I think if, if there's anybody – in the country that can take nine new players and put it together quickly. You know, it's guys that have been, that's done it before. Thank you. Okay, let's go to Scotty uh, Bordelon. Hey coach, hope you're doing well. Uh, I'm curious what you see from Jalen Tate in, in terms of what he brings to the floor for Arkansas at that lead guard spot. And then uh, Devontae Davis, the freshman two guard, just kind of what jumps out to you in your staff about him? Yeah, I like both guys' versatility. Uh, I think their coaching staff setting them up very, very well. Um, you know, one day prep, I'm really good with numbers. Make sure I'm right. Uh, Tate's 11. He's a, he's a long kind of Rajon Rondo type point guard body. Um, he looks to me like he's fearless on both ends of the floor. Um, I, I think he might be their best defender in terms of re reliability and doing uh, what he's supposed to do. Doesn't make a lot of mistakes as we've prepared, you know, for hours now. Um, I, I like their team. Their freshmen are playing like they're not freshmen. And that's another key thing I think you got to do in college basketball. Like, you know, Micah Peavy for us is not a freshman anymore. He's started most of the games this year. He's played a lot of minutes. Um, so I think when you get to this point, you know, you really don't have freshmen, if that makes sense. You've got guys that have played 20, 25, 30 games. And I think that's true for Arkansas's young players. Um, I like their team. I, I've caught several games this year, just watching games as a, as a basketball guy. And, um, you know, no doubt about it. They're deserving of their um, ranking, their seed. Uh, they obviously played their best basketball the last month of the season. They can play different styles. Uh, they game plan very well. Um, you know, they got a great fan base. And so this, this is a good team. We're, we're going to have to play our best game of the season. Um, and we're, you know, we're, we're prepared to do that. That's the objective. And, we're not scared of that challenge, but it's the reality that faces us. Uh, we'll have to play our best 40 of the season, I think, to be successful in this game.
right, let's go to um, Eric Kelly. Coach, having played an Eric Musselman team and now watching a different school, but same coach on tape, what are those kind of philosophies of his teams that stand out to you as being constants? Well, in my opinion, because uh, I've never talked to coach about that, but I think there's an aggressiveness and a swag um, and a confidence and an enthusiasm and a passion. And um, what I do know about coach is, you know, he's a basketball guy. Um, I don't think he sits around thinking what he's going to do after coaching. I, I don't think he's probably working on his law degree behind the scenes. I mean, basketball guy, right? Uh, loves it, eats it, drinks it, sleeps it. Um, that's my perspective and knowing some NBA people that have played for him or with him and what have you. So, um, you know, and I respect that. Um, I like, I respect what, what kind of dad he is too. I got one of his sons on the staff and we've already mentioned his daughter and her NCAA moments. And um, so it looks like he's got a great family. And, um, you know, he's just somebody that I, I got respect for. His teams play hard. Um, you know, you're not going to go out there and, Every once in a while, you can get a gift in a college basketball season where the other team just doesn't doesn't bring their A game. Doesn't happen ever in this tournament, but it happens sometimes during the season. But that's not going to happen uh, with an Arkansas team. They're going to play hard. Uh, we know that they're going to be aggressive. We know that they're going to game plan. There's going to be some things that we don't uh, know that are going to come. So we got to anticipate the uh, unanticipated. Is that a do? Expect the unexpected anticipate the unanticipatable. I don't know about that, but uh, that, that's what he does. He always throws a different wrinkle. You know what? You watch every game. I didn't see that last game. So to me, that's kind of NBA philosophy. He's a matchup guy. And real quick, being kind of the basketball history guy that you are, what's the cool aspect of being able to play in these kind of like bas basketball cathedrals almost of the sport in, in Assembly Hall and now Hinkle? Yeah, I, I do think it's cool. You know, I was one of those guys when when it, uh, first of all, we were going to have the whole NCAA tournament in Indianapolis. I didn't immediately say, oh, that sucks. I immediately said, man, this could be cool. Because sometimes I think different is good. You know, like I love variety and diversity and everything I do. Eat, music, um, you know, so I like this. Uh, you know, the NCAA tournament's obviously special because our whole country is involved with the regions and stuff. No doubt about it. It's the best, period. But this year, instead of sitting around talking about what we can't do, let's talk about what we can do. And I think this is really cool. You know, we got to play in assembly hall. Um, obviously that's a special place. And now we get to play in Hinkle. So, um, you know, I mean, everybody's seen Hoosiers. Um, and then you go a step further and you know about the historical games that were played in there, uh, the different things. Um, I know coming to Indianapolis, you know, it used to be the, uh, the Nike camp and then some recruiting junior college. We, Spent some time down here. One of the best players I ever coached, uh, Will Jones, was from Indianapolis. I coached him in 2001 at Seminole State College. So spent some time in this state. Um, and every time we're here, we drive by, you know, just to kind of check it out and take a picture in front of it and stuff like that. So I'm trying to think if I've ever been inside it. I don't think I have. Um, so it'll just be cool to be there. And we'll embrace it. You know, I mean, I know it's a game. I know we got to be businesslike. But I mean, dude. When we go in there, we're going to smell the roses for at least a quick minute and check it out, uh, and then we'll get focused and try to win the game. Go to Joe Yeager. Hey, Coach. Um, looking at the current Arkansas. Yeah, I got it. All right. No delay or anything you can hear. That's cool. Uh, um, but uh, looking at the current Arkansas team uh, and then comparing that to the Nevada team, uh, that you faced three years ago, I guess it was. Um, does it look to you like Musselman has evolved his system, or is this kind of a little bit of a mirror image team with just different personnel? Yeah, I wouldn't know enough to be an expert on that. I remember the Nevada team had some NBA players, uh, the twin brothers, and then the transfer from – I don't know, they had another guy, about 6'5", guy that was a dynamite player. I keep wanting to say Rice, but I don't think that's Jordan right. Jordan Caroline. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Caroline, he's special, man. Um, you know, they spread you out. They run the NBA ISOs and sets, and he picks on people defensively. I see a lot in this year's team. They, they again, have NBA players, no doubt about it. Um, you can tell his DNA is on the teams, you know, the the aggressiveness, the spacing. the. Um, but then, obviously, it's changed a little bit, too. Uh, 
that Nevada game was uh, many river trips uh, and many academic study halls ago. So I remember a little bit about it, but not a lot. And uh, I was wondering if you could just take us uh, through a day in your life uh, before the game, the day before the NCAA tournament game, uh, like today, uh, what you do, sun up, sunrise, your routine. Yeah, we're working really hard as a staff. Uh, we've got everybody on our staff with individual responsibilities. We work, we come back and meet, we work, we come back and meet. Uh, to me, the most important thing is organization and efficiency. The biggest threats to organization and efficiency, I think, is distractions. Uh, and there's a lot of them around here. Um, so we try to eliminate our distractions. And we just try to get things done for the players. In the meantime, we try to stay very organized for the players so that their life really doesn't change. They feel like we got two days to play Kansas. Um, we're giving them information, but we're trying to do it in a deliberate way, in a, in a time attention span way. So, um, so I don't, you know, we're working really hard. Then we meet as a staff, we work really hard, meet as a staff. Then we bring the players in, show them the information and don't want to give them too much, but certainly want to give them as much as we possibly can. Um, you know, not, not, not a lot of sleep right now. Uh, I think when you get down to that night before the game, there's not much you can do. You know, to me, the early, earlier you can get the game plan in and spend your last couple of sessions to, uh, to review is best. Um, but the, the night before the game, you know, get a little rest to make sure you're on your A game. But before that, it is a grind. No bad, bad, no bad about it. And we're, we're no different than anybody else. I mean, everybody's working and everybody's getting after it. Um, it would be pretty cool, like, uh, for somebody to kind of follow somebody around, you know, and, and see the whole deal. Um, it's really interesting. I was uh, floored when we made the NCAA tournament year one with Coach Knight. Uh, we had a really good team, really good team. Andy Ellis and Andre Emmett and Mikey Marshall and those guys. Andy was our senior. Um, you know, we, we had finished third in the Big 12. And we, and we got beat the first round by a basketball trivia here, a Bruce Weber a Southern Illinois team. But – um, that was my first experience with Coach Knight in an NCAA tournament, and watching the preparation was amazing. Uh, before that, I'd been to the tournament with Coach Tom Penders, and uh, his approach is really, really cool uh, and confident. So it's interesting how different coaches do it, um, but I think we all kind of are get, trying to get the same thing done, right? Prepare your team, be efficient. Uh, you got to get you guys a lot of rest, too. You know, like these things can be tiresome. These NCAA tournament games, for some reason, they just – they're a little bit different than a regular game. They really are. So I really believe in trying to get the guy's legs back too and get them as much rest as we can. Eric, did you have a follow-up? Your hand's up or are you done? All right, guys, we appreciate your coverage. Thanks, guys.